Hey, what is going on, Cal Pokes? And welcome back to 10 Insane Details You Probably Didn't Know in Red Dead Redemption 2. I thought I knew him. Please do not do that again. Now get moving. Come on. Oh, darling. I never thought I'd see this day again. You no good hillbilly piece of shit! This first detail is one that I just recently discovered just a few days ago out in the plains of, uh, well, Great Plains. You can see an unmarked grave that looks like it was just freshly dug. Of course, this doesn't really make sense as I'm playing in the epilogue, but we'll just assume it's just playing as Arthur in 1899. And you can find this unmarked grave by Quaker's Cove, or in Red Dead Redemption 1, it's where the wreck of the Saren Deputy was. Anyway, I believe that this unmarked grave actually is the place of where Matt Callender was buried. Um, it's unclear where the Pinkertons actually put him, or even if they placed him in a grave. They could have just thrown him in a ditch or uh, burned his corpse. Um, but I believe that this is, given the location and uh, in the game, that this is probably where Matt Callender's grave was initially supposed to be, even maybe as a point of interest. But Rockstar decided to just cut that out of the final game uh, as it wouldn't make sense to where Arthur would know where Matt Callender was actually buried. But anyway, that's just my take on it. Let me know what you guys think. There are also some weird engravings or marks on the grave or on the horizontal section of the cross. And uh, it's hard for me to make out what they say, but maybe you guys can put it together. When taking Mr. Getty's supplies back to Pronghorn Ranch for the first time, if you lose some of the items from the cart, John will remark about that. Of course. Lost something. Easy now. That didn't sound good. No. Okay. I guess I ain't much of a delivery boy. When making your way up the mountain with Rainsfall, you'll come across some wolves eating a horse carcass. Rainsfall will point it out to you, and you can decide whether to disturb them, shoot them, or just simply do nothing, to which you'll have different remarks for each outcome. Go on, get out of here! Good. There was no need to harm them. When going to break eagle flies out of the fort, you can hear two soldiers talking outside the main gate. If you listen closely, you can listen to their conversation about uh, Colonel Favors. If you leave a dead body or dead animal carcass and come back after a few days or a few hours in game, you can see flies begin to start buzzing around it. When you're riding out in the Great Plains, you can often see sometimes a Skinner victim uh, whoa, whoa. that is deceased riding a horse that's been scalped and with many arrows shot in him. If you actually focus onto him, you can have unique lines of dialogue whenever John sees him. Christ, man. Would you get yourself? 
myself into. That was a hell of a fall. After completing all the prerequisite missions for Marco, you can come back to his house on Dover Hill and you can see him deceased and his robot disappeared. It appears that for some reason the robot went sideways, attacked him, killed him, um, but if you explore around his laboratory a bit you can find this note left and it's actually a blueprint for a plan that he had to take over the entire world with his army of robots. And next to his body you can find an electric lantern that you can use to replace your other lantern that you have in your inventory. This, however, is significant in helping you solve the next hidden part to this mission, which doesn't show up on your minimap. So as shown in the previous clip, if you pull out the electric lantern, and depending on which direction you hold it up at, it will emit a dim red light or a bright yellow light. Now, if you follow the direction of the red dim light, it'll actually lead you up into the mountains and you can dis discover the next hidden part of this side quest that Rockstar left as a little surprise for us. Eventually following this red dim light, it will lead you up into the mountains past Coulter where you had your first campsite in the game and you'll actually find the robot that ran away from Marco's lab. After discovering this, and if you return back to the same site eight years later as John in the epilogue, you can find the robot still sitting there, but this time showing signs of wear and tear on his metal body. You can see signs of rust and decay all around, showing that he has not moved from the same spot within the last eight years. Don't, don't deserve it. Deserve, deserve. 